Hi, I'm going to show you how to make this uh, shabby chic lampshade here. It's got a, a silk ribbon embroidered rose on it. I'll show you how to do that as well. So I've got this lampshade I bought in a charity shop, 50p bargain. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just strip off the cover that's on here and I'm going to use that as a pattern. If you don't have uh, something you can pull off, if you just have the frame, I have another lampshade video that will show you how to make a template. Um, it's called the Magnolia Lampshade. You can look at that and that will show you how to make your own template. But I'm going to show you how to use the fabric that you take off. So I'm just going to split apart the seams now. Uh, and this lampshade is constructed in two pieces. So I'm just going to run my uh, stitch ripper down the seam just to separate and get one of the two pieces that I can use as a template. So I'm just now going to snip along this one. So there I've got my, my template piece. Here's the uh, fabric I think I want to use. And um, this is a doily, again I found in a charity shop. And I'm going to use the doily over half of the um, lampshade piece so I'm, I've got enough doily here to do both halves um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just chop this little doily in half so I fi find the half point with a ruler I'm just using an air erasable pen here um, to, to draw a line that will disappear we won't see this line um, just to, to chop it accurately in half you can get the air erasable pens from craftyattic.com so now I'm just going to use my template piece. Obviously I need to um, add a seam allowance on either end. Uh, so when I sew it together it will be the right size. So I'm just using my air erasable marker again to mark the outside of the template piece here. My piece of fabric underneath is doubled up so that I'm going to cut two of these pieces. So I've drawn around my template now. I'm just going to stick a few pins in just to hold those two pieces of fabric together. Well, I uh, snip round and cut these pieces out. You want these pieces to be as accurately sized as possible because you want your finished lampshade to be nice and tight. So I've now got my half a doily there and I'm just going to place it where I wish it to be on that piece of fabric. I'm just putting a few pins through and I'm just going to run a few lines of stitching over this on the uh, sewing machine. Uh, just about four or five little rows of stitching and then I'm going to pop it into an embroidery hoop. I've got a nice small embroidery hoop here and that's uh, in nice and tight. So I've put that into a frame holder and I've now got some 13mm pure silk white embroidery ribbon. Uh, you can get that from craftyattic.com. I'm running it through a set of hair straighteners. If you haven't got any of those you can just use a regular iron to prepare your ribbon. And I've got some chenille needles, again we sell these on the website, and an air erasable pen. So I'm just drawing a line uh, fairly straight on this um, piece of backing fabric where I want my rows to be. So I've drawn that line there and I'm just now going to take the 13mm embroidery ribbon and bring it up through the fabric and perform a ribbon stitch. So a ribbon stitch, the ribbon passes back down through the centre of itself and you just pull very gently so that the um, end of the petal rolls into a little point. So I'm doing four of these ribbon stitches in a row, all facing roughly upwards. So each one of these ribbon stitches is uh, just past the ribbon back down through the centre of itself. If you wish to watch another video on how to do these tea roses, there is another video on my YouTube channel and on the website, um, and it's a, a, just called a tea rose, so you can look at another video of how to construct this rose 
properly from scratch with the buds. So I'm just doing um, the little rows of stitches here now. Just working through. So basically there's a row of four toward, pointing towards the top. There's uh, one at either end which is twisted and uh, pointing outwards and then a row of four at the bottom uh, where the stitches are pointing downwards. And finally then we have another row of four that come up through the bottom row of petals and towards and through the top row. So we've got two rows of four there with one either side sticking out. And now we're just going to work a row where the petals come up through the bottom petals and just go back down through. So all of these stitches are ribbon stitches apart from this top row that comes up through the bottom row. They're just normal straight stitches. So they just come up through the towards the top of the bottom stitches and then back down through the gaps left between the other petals on the first row. As I say, there is another video on my YouTube channel of how to do this flower in a little more accuracy. So there we've got the, uh, the flower finished there, the flower head. So I've coloured the petals there, I'll show you how to do that in a moment with the bud that we're going to create shortly. So I've just moved the um, rose over slightly. I'm now going to work uh, a little bud here. So I've still got the 13mm pure white silk embroidery ribbon on my chenille needle here. You need chenille needles because they've got very sharp points and very fat ends. So I'm performing a ribbon stitch here, passing the ribbon back down through the centre of itself, leaving it slightly puffed off of the fabric and a straight stitch next to it. So with a straight stitch the ribbon just comes up through the fabric and then straight back down again. Making sure that you're pulling the ribbon straight so there's no twist in it. So then bringing the ribbon up through the fabric and I'm twisting and twisting until it forms a a cylinder of silk and I'm now just going to uh, pin that very lightly with a couple of pins and couch that down with just a regular machine thread. So couching just uh, using a very fine thread to attach the silk to the, the backing fabric there. Just going to couch that on so that it looks nice and neat. With the end of the uh, stalk there I'm just going to use the chenille needle just to pass that ribbon back down through the fabric again so that you don't see the end of the ribbon. So there's my little bud. I'm going to work some leaves now. This is 7mm pure silk embroidery ribbon and I'm just going to do four little ribbon stitches. So bringing the ribbon up, passing the ribbon back down through the centre of itself using this very sharp needle and just allowing the ends then to curl over gently and to form a little point. So I'm going to work four of these little leaves on this stalk here in exactly the same way. So we're working these uh, flowers in white so that we can colour them beautifully with some permanent marker pens. I use pro markers, the, the ink is permanent, it won't bleed. So I've got the colours I'm using here are dusky pink and sun-kissed pink, sorry dusky rose it is. So I'm using the lighter uh, sun-kissed pink towards the base of the petals and then touching the very tips of the petals with the darker colour, just allowing the silk to uh, blend those colours into each other. 
and for the leaves we've got marsh green which is this lighter colour towards the centre of the leaves and holly which is darker colour towards the edge of the leaves and again just allowing the silk and the uh, pens to do their work and allow those colours to run into each other and blend beautifully. So with this little bud arrangement here I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side of the flower so that I've got a nice symmetrical arrangement. So now I've got some backing fabric here, this is just um, calico, just some regular calico. I'm just going to pin my pieces roughly to the calico because um, I'm going to cut out a, a, a liner for this lampshade. Obviously we've done embroidery on this and there are all sorts of stitches and things on the back that we don't want to see so I'm just going to line the um, inside of the lampshade beautifully with this calico. So I'm going to treat both pieces in exactly the same way because obviously I've done a back and a front to this lampshade. I'll do the other one in the same way as well. So now I've got these two pieces with liners on the back. I'm just going to row some, run a row of machine stitches across the bottom of the top to hold the two fabrics together. So I've done that now with the machine. And now I'm going to pin these pieces together down the seams and I'm going to run a seam line about four or five millimetres away from the edge. You remember we left a seam allowance? Well I'm going to take up that seam allowance now by stitching along this imaginary seam line. So I'm being quite careful that I've got all of the pieces of fabric uh, contained in that seam. The liner, the outer and the doily and you can see I've stitched those seams now very neatly towards the edge and I can now just turn this uh, lampshade in the right way and start to stretch it over my, my lampshade wire form here. So I can tug it about a bit, it's, it should be fairly tight, it shouldn't be so tight that you can't do anything with it but it should be fairly tight. So now I've just got um, a doubled up regular sewing thread um, on a regular needle and I'm just stitching the top of this lampshade to the form. It's when this lampshade was initially made somebody uh, put bias binding around the top of the shade there and glued it and we left that on, I didn't take that off because I didn't want to have to do that bit again. So I'm just stitching the bottom in exactly the same way now and I'm pulling it nice and tight as I'm going to make the lampshade nice and tidy. So I'm just going to continue working around. There's my uh, lampshade coming on nicely now. This is a little bit of um, crocheted uh, trim here. I crocheted this in a quiet moment sat by the telly, flung it in a box and now I've found a use for it. So I've dyed it with some tea um, just to age it down and antique it. So I just made a very weak tea solution. Uh, dropped the crochet in it and then just ran it under the tap and put it under the iron and that's it. It's the right colour to use now. So I'm just going to lightly uh, stitch this on and this will be the bottom trim of my beautiful shabby chic lampshade. That's quite difficult to say. So I've got a hot glue gun now and I'm just going to use the hot glue gun to um, stick the braid on around the bottom and the top edge of the lampshade just to tidy everything up. So hot glue gun is great because it's instant grab and it sets very very quickly so you only want to uh, put a little bit of glue on at a time, three or four inches, stick the braid and then stick a little bit more glue on and just work around like that until it's all stuck on. So there's our beautiful shabby chic lampshade, it's all finished. This has cost next to nothing to do. Um, there we are, you can get the embroidery materials, needles and things from craftyattic.com so please have a look at the website. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, we've got new videos coming out all the time. Thanks very much for watching, I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!